Over the past 10 to 15 years, a revolution has occurred in molecular biology and in molecular medicine, in which case we've begun to have a whole new set of tools that allowed us to begin to understand some of the molecular events that are occurring in cancer. And those changes, those uh, uh, tools, have begun to allow us to envision a new way of treating and diagnosing cancer patients. So I'm going to start talking about some of the differences between the traditional approaches to cancer care and something that we call personalized medicine. So traditionally, the diagnosis of cancer has been largely a one-size-fits-all deal. That is, tumors whose cells look the same under the microscope uh, on a glass slide. In other words, the tumor block is pieces put on here and it's stained and you get pieces of tumor tissue that look something like this. That patients whose tumors appear to be the same under the microscope are in fact the same tumors and that's true. However, if we think about it, we've begun to realize that we can make some pretty clear statements about how in general patients with a certain type of cancer will do, but we're not so good at telling how an individual patient may do with a particular therapy. And it's that recognition that's begun to bring forward the concept of personalized medicine or individualized therapy. At the same time, there's been a revolution in molecular biology that's made us begin to understand some of the key events that occur in cancer. In normal cells, cells communicate with each other by sending signals. Cancer has a way of hijacking those very signals to tell cells to grow when they ought not to grow or prevents them from stopping growing when they ought to when they ought to stop growing. And it's in fact alterations of those cellular networks or those signaling networks that are indeed the hallmarks of cancer. So the molecular revolution has begun to give us a glimpse as to what those molecular events actually are. But it's also raised some very important concepts for therapy. That is, there are now tools that can target those alterations. Some of the characteristic alterations are things like oncogenes, where cells turn on signals constitutively, telling them to grow all of the time, or tumor suppressor proteins that normally tell cells to stop growing and they become lost, so that the, essentially the breaks on the cancer cells are lost. Now we have a set of tools that may actually enable us to block those very pathways that are turned on by those oncogenes or by the loss of those tumor suppressor proteins. And that, in fact, has ushered in a new era in molecular medicine that we're only in the very earliest parts of, uh, of experience in, in beginning to understand. And the concept of molecular medicine or personalized, individualized medicine looks something like this. Um, we can begin to realize that, again, our diagnoses are good for telling about groups of patients, but not good for telling about individual patients. For molecular biology, we've begun to understand that cancer involves a dysregulation of key signaling events inside cells. That is, cells turn on signals persistently, telling them to grow when they ought not to grow, or divide, divide when they ought not to divide, or not to die when they ought actually to die. And these alterations, in fact, are the hallmarks of cancer. But what's most interesting is we've also begun to recognize that these very molecular events that drive the cancer may, in fact, actually be the Achilles heel of cancer, because we may be able to use tools like antibodies, these special proteins that target these altered uh, signaling proteins, or small molecule inhibitors, drugs that one could even take orally, um, that have a very specific effect on these signaling networks. And what's remarkable is that, in fact, these may be able to affect the cancer cells without making patients sick. If you think about how we traditionally treat cancer, we tend to use radiation and chemotherapy, which we know can have toxic effects because not only are they damaging the rapidly dividing cancer cells, but other body cells also divide. The cells that make our hair, our uh, gastrointestinal lining, are also ra rapidly dividing cells. And when we treat patients with radiation therapy and chemotherapy, we know we have toxic effects uh, um, as well. But the idea is that the cancer cells will take more of that and will have a differential effect. But the idea of targeted therapy is to use either small molecule inhibitors, again these are pills, drugs uh, that could actually target altered proteins that are occurring in cancer or antibodies to target those altered proteins in cancer, that these agents may in fact have a very differential effect such that they target cancer cells without in any way harming normal cells. What this means is that there's the potential to treat patients who have cancer with a pill that could have a dramatic effect on their cancer, but not actually make them sick. And what's remarkable 
is that this has in fact become a reality for certain rare kinds of cancer. For example, chronic myeloid leukemia. Those patients have a very particular molecular alteration uh, called the BCR able fusion oncogene and a drug, a pill called Gleevec that can actually block the activity of that altered protein puts those patients into remission. Part of the challenge though is that almost all of the patients who have that disease have that particular molecular alteration. But most patients with other types of cancers, for example glioblastoma, have a hodgepodge of smattering of different molecular alterations and the problem is we can't tell them apart by looking at one of these slides. So the concept of personalized medicine means that we pathologists have to become better at finding out what are the molecular alterations that are occurring inside each patient's tumors. So we've been taking a number of different approaches towards doing that. We've been developing molecular tools that do allow us, in fact, to use slides like this to begin to ask what are the molecular alterations in cancer and to make therapeutic decisions based on that.